When we picture Earth's most powerful prehistoric giants, we default to the usual suspects. T-Rex, Brachiosaurus, the thunderous icons of dinosaur fame. But what if the largest land mammal to ever walk the Earth didn't come from the age of dinosaurs at all? What we're about to discover is a prehistoric elephant so massive it could dwarf a T-Rex in both size and presence. A ground-shaking giant that roamed Pleistocene Asia and Europe, possibly outweighing any land mammal to ever exist. Yet, despite its colossal size and surprisingly recent extinction, most people have never even heard its name. Meet Paleoloxodon nematicus, a straight-tusked titan that ruled the land long after the dinosaurs had fallen and somehow still vanished from our collective memory. Paleoloxodon wasn't just big, it was raw biological power shaped over time into flesh and bone. These straight-tusked elephants belonged to a genus that included several massive species, with Paleoloxodon nematicus standing tallest among them. The name comes from the Greek paleos, meaning ancient, and loxos, meaning slanting, referring to the unique diamond-shaped plates on their molars. Originating in Africa, these giants eventually spread across Eurasia during the Middle and Late Pleistocene, roughly 781,000 to 50,000 years ago. Picture our modern African elephant, already an impressive creature, and then mentally stretch it in every dimension. Adult male Paleoloxodon had shoulder heights reaching 4.9 meters or 16 feet, compared to modern African elephants' modest 3.3 meters or 10.8 feet. Their tusks curved outward and upward in dramatic spirals, sometimes exceeding 3 meters or 10 feet in length, longer than an average human is tall. These weren't just weapons, but tools for stripping bark, digging for water, and likely impressive displays during mating competitions. The skull alone tells a story of magnificent proportions, high-domed with reinforced bone to support massive muscles that powered a trunk potentially more dexterous than modern elephants. A distinctive feature across the Paleoloxodon genus was the parieto-occipital crest, an unusual bony ridge that projected forward above the nasal opening, overhanging the rest of the skull. This crest likely anchored powerful muscles supporting their enormous heads which contained brains larger than any land mammal alive today, including their elephant cousins. And those distinctive teeth? Massive parallel ridges designed to shear through tough vegetation like prehistoric lawnmowers. Unlike many prehistoric creatures reconstructed from fragmentary remains, we have remarkably complete Paleoloxodon specimens. Their wide feet with specialized padding distributed their enormous weight across soft ground, like walking with built-in snowshoes, allowing these behemoths to traverse varied terrains from forests to grasslands. Paleoloxodon's range was impressively vast, stretching from Western Europe to India, Japan, and possibly even into parts of Southeast Asia. Different species and subspecies adapted to various environments, from the somewhat smaller European forest forms to the true giants of the Indian subcontinent. They weren't just successful, they were ecosystem engineers, their massive appetites and movements literally reshaping the landscapes they inhabited. At its maximum recorded size, Paleoloxodon nematicus potentially reached shoulder heights of 4.9 meters or 16.1 feet and weighed up to 22 metric tons. For comparison, the largest verified African elephant on record weighed about 10 tons, less than half the size. If you parked a Paleoloxodon next to a fully grown bull African elephant, the modern giant would look like an adolescent by comparison. But it's the dinosaur comparison that truly boggles the mind. The average T-Rex weighed around 7 to 8 tons, with the largest known specimens pushing 9. That means you could stack two fully grown T-Rexes on a scale, and still need to toss in a third to match the estimated weight of a mature Paleoloxodon. Height? Just as humbling. While T-Rex stood about 3.6 meters, or 12 feet at the hip, it would have had to look up just to meet the eye of this mega elephant. And it wasn't just the body that was oversized. Paleoloxodon's tusks were equally extreme, with the largest known examples stretching over 3 meters, longer than most modern cars are wide. These weren't decorative, they were powerful tools, capable of toppling small trees or tearing through packed earth with ease. If you stood next to a Paleoloxodon, the top of your head would barely reach its knee. Its footprint alone would be larger than an office desk. One stride could cover the length of a medium-sized sedan, and its appetite? Staggering. 
Conservative estimates suggest an adult would consume roughly 150 to 200 kilograms, or 330 to 440 pounds, of vegetation daily, with intake potentially doubling during peak feeding seasons. Yet despite these incredible proportions, paleoloxodon remains conspicuously absent from popular imagination. While we've created entire film franchises around dinosaurs, these true titans of the more recent past have been relegated to occasional museum exhibits and academic papers. It raises the question, how did something so incredible become the forgotten giant of prehistory? But being the biggest creature around came with both advantages and serious trade-offs. Their massive size made them nearly untouchable by predators, but it also came at a cost. That daily intake of hundreds of kilos of vegetation added up fast. Over a 60 to 70 year lifespan, a single paleoloxodon could process more than 3,500 tons of plant material. To keep that engine running, it would have needed to spend most of its waking hours foraging, grazing, and stripping entire trees down to the bark. This massive appetite meant spending up to 18 to 20 hours per day feeding, a nearly constant operation of trunk-to-mouth movement. Their specialized molars, with diamond-shaped ridges perfect for shearing through tough vegetation, would gradually wear down over their lifetime. Like modern elephants, they likely cycled through sets of teeth, with new molars moving forward in the jaw as older ones wore out, a necessary adaptation for a lifetime of intense chewing. Water requirements were equally staggering. An estimated 150 to 300 liters or 40 to 80 gallons daily, depending on temperature and activity levels. During dry seasons, this would have necessitated the ability to travel long distances between watering holes or to dig wells using those massive tusks and dexterous trunks. In fact, these water access points they created would have benefited countless other species in their ecosystem, making Paleoloxodon a literal wellspring of life during difficult times. The extreme size of these animals also came with unique challenges, especially when it came to staying cool. While smaller mammals struggled to retain heat, Paleoloxodon had the opposite problem, getting rid of it. Their enormous ears likely contained dense networks of blood vessels that acted like biological radiators, helping to release excess body heat. Unlike their woolly mammoth relatives, which were built for cold environments, many Paleoloxodon species lived in warmer regions where overheating posed a constant threat. But at least predation wasn't much of a concern. Few carnivores would risk attacking a healthy adult. Perhaps only the largest cave lions or groups of scimitar-toothed cats might have attempted to take down juveniles or weakened individuals. This relative freedom from predatory pressure is one of the luxury benefits of extreme size. Social structure likely mirrored that of modern elephants, with matriarchal herds made up of related females and their young. Adult males would have lived alone or in small bachelor groups, only rejoining the herds for mating. During periods of must, when testosterone levels surge, their sheer size would have made dominance displays even more dramatic than those seen today. Imagine two rivals, each weighing over 20 tons, locked in an earth-shaking confrontation. And with such complex social dynamics, intelligence would have played a major role. It was almost certainly comparable to that of modern elephants, possibly even greater, given their larger brain capacity. They likely shared similar emotional depth, long-term memory, problem-solving ability, and perhaps even early forms of culture. The idea of such massive beings possessing self-awareness and emotional lives adds another layer of meaning to their disappearance. Movement across the landscape would have been deliberate and energy efficient. Their massive padded feet distributed weight effectively, a necessary adaptation when you're essentially a walking skyscraper. Despite their bulk, they could likely reach speeds of 25 to 30 kilometers per hour during short bursts. Not exactly sprinting, but fast enough to make anything in their path reconsider its life choices. But perhaps the most fascinating aspect of Paleoloxodon life was their role as ecosystem engineers. Like modern elephants, but on a grander scale, they would have transformed landscapes, converting woodlands to grasslands through feeding, creating clearings, maintaining water access points, and dispersing seeds across vast distances. The environmental ripple effects of such massive creatures likely influenced countless other species, making them keystone species in their ancient ecosystems. And as you might expect, 
Paleoloxodon wasn't roaming the landscape alone. The Pleistocene was full of large, unusual creatures. Among the herbivores sharing its territory were the woolly mammoth, Mammuthus primigenius, and the steppe mammoth, Mammuthus trogontherii, which occupied many of the same regions, particularly in colder areas during glacial periods. These fellow proboscideans likely competed for similar resources, though they may have favored slightly different types of vegetation. In parts of Asia, Paleoloxodon also overlapped with Stegodon, another elephant relative known for its distinctive straight tusks. This created a landscape where multiple elephant-like species coexisted, each carving out its own ecological niche. Massive herbivores like Megalocaros giganteus, the Irish elk, grazed in the same woodlands and meadows. Various rhino species, including the Merck's rhinoceros and narrow-nosed rhinoceros, added to this megaherbivore assembly, while the stout and powerful steppe bison roamed in herds across the open grasslands where Paleoloxodon occasionally ventured. This congregation of giants created fascinating ecological dynamics. Each occupied slightly different dietary niches, preventing direct competition. While Paleoloxodon likely browsed on trees and tall shrubs, Others like the woolly rhino specialized in grazing on lower vegetation. Together, these mega herbivores maintained a mosaic landscape, preventing any single plant species from dominating. Predators too existed on a grand scale in this lost world. Cave lions would have been formidable hunters, though even they would hesitate before challenging a healthy adult Paleoloxodon. Scimitar-toothed cats known as Homotherium with their elongated upper canines were specialized in bringing down large prey possibly even targeting young or weakened Paleoloxodon calves. Adding to this fearsome lineup was the giant hyena, Pachycracuda brevirostris, a massive bone crusher weighing over 100 kilograms or 220 pounds. It would have eagerly scavenged Paleoloxodon carcasses, capable of crunching through bones that most other predators wouldn't dare touch. The most intriguing relationship, however, was between Paleoloxodon and early humans. Archaeological evidence shows that Homo heidelbergensis hunters occasionally targeted these massive elephants as early as 300,000 years ago. At sites throughout Europe, scientists have found stone tools alongside butchered Paleoloxodon remains, illustrating our ancestors' audacity in tackling prey that outweighed them several hundred times over. Later, Neanderthals continued this practice, having developed specialized hunting strategies for dispatching these giants likely involving coordinated group efforts to isolate vulnerable individuals. These hunting interactions weren't one-sided affairs. Bringing down a Paleoloxodon would have been extraordinarily dangerous, with significant risk to the human hunters, yet the nutritional payoff was enormous. A single elephant could feed an entire community for weeks and provide raw materials for tools, shelter, and clothing. This risk-reward calculation shaped our ancestors' cognitive development, requiring sophisticated planning, communication, and technological innovation. Fossil footprints discovered at sites like Schoningen, Germany, provide rare glimpses of these species physically crossing paths. In one remarkable 300,000-year-old tableau, Homo heidelbergensis footprints were found alongside those of Paleoloxodon antiquus, a fleeting moment of coexistence frozen in time. The extinction of Paleoloxodon represents one of prehistory's great enigmas. How did an animal so successful, so widely distributed and so physically imposing simply vanish from Earth's stage? Unlike the dinosaurs whose end came swiftly with an asteroid, Paleoloxodon's disappearance was gradual and uneven. In Europe, some populations like Paleoloxodon antiquus survived until 30,000 to 40,000 years ago, while isolated groups in Asia may have held on until as recently as 12,000 years ago. This staggered pattern points to multiple pressures rather than a single event. Climate change played a major role. Rapid shifts between glacial and interglacial periods shrank their forest habitats, isolating populations and weakening their resilience. But the timing is hard to ignore. Their decline lines up closely with the spread of Homo sapiens across Eurasia. Unlike earlier human species, Modern humans may have hunted these elephants more systematically, and with their slow reproduction, even light pressure could have tipped the balance. It wasn't just hunting. As humans expanded, they reshaped entire landscapes, clearing forests, using fire, 
disrupting ecosystems that had existed for millennia. This loss of habitat added another layer of stress. Globally, we see a familiar pattern. Megafauna disappear soon after humans arrive, from Australia to the Americas. But in Africa, where large mammals lived alongside hominins for much longer, the losses weren't as severe. Sudden exposure, not gradual coexistence, may have made the difference. The most likely answer? A perfect storm. Climate stress, hunting, habitat loss, and possibly disease. Each one damaging, but together overwhelming. But Paleoloxodon wasn't the only giant roaming the ancient world. In our next video, we turn our attention to another forgotten heavyweight of prehistory, the Mastodon. Click on this video to watch it. And as always, this is Roaring Echo. Thank you for watching.